myself Santosh. I do have around nine years of experience working in IT industry, and currently I'm working as manager in Microsoft. My core experience is towards data science, data engineering, and data analytics project. Currently, I'm managing around eight projects, and total I have worked with around eighty projects from different domains, such as banking, healthcare, insurance, e-commerce, and retail. And I'm a certified trainer. taking training for ksr for the last 5 years right the one reptile which you're seeing on the screen it's not only a reptile it's going to be a technology from now right and what we are going to learn is going to be python now what happens with your structured query language or sql sql is actually a language which is used to communicate only with database for example i can relate your sql with your own native language your own native language what is your own native language maybe it could be kannada it could be telugu it could be tamil if you know this language you can survive only in that state correct you can survive only in that state imagine you know kannada you can stay only in karnataka similarly what was sql it was actually a language which you can communicate only with database now anything if you want to communicate outside the database i am sorry sql was not the technology used for then if i want to stay within india rather than learning a very native language which is my own language i'll start learning english so if i learn english i can survive anywhere i can survive even in kashmir i can survive in even in north east south west wherever i want i can survive because now i am taking my next step of language which is going to be one programming language by this programming language i can not only work with data i can work with all around the world technologies any technology any enterprise anything i want i can go and communicate and that's the technology which is for you python now question for you there are n number of names that you can keep it for a technology why did they keep a keep a snake name can anyone guess why is a technology name called python it's a snake name why they have yes. kept as a snake name for a it technology can... it can live anywhere okay acceptable next uh, let me give you one fact you tell me whether it's true or false okay since uh, i am only telling you the uh, fact why it's kept as python I want you to tell yes or no. Okay, python is a snake which can eat any animal. It can swallow complete body, human body. It mm -hmm. can completely swallow another goat or whatever it is. It can completely swallow without any issues. Just as as I said, python is going to replace all coding languages. Now I told you the fact. Tell me true or false. Just like python is going to eat completely whether it's a human body or it's a goat or whatever it is it's going to completely swallow now what i'm thinking is python is going to swallow all the other technologies and that's the king of technology acceptable or not acceptable why it's not applicable for technology why it cannot replace any other technology it's see when, when we are we are comparing coding when we are comparing programming i am comparing only with programming only like let's say python with java python with c python with c++ i'm comparing programming language with programming language now what i am trying to tell is your python can swallow all the other programming language and it can always stand on top that's my assumption is it true or false let's try to stick on to my question python can completely swallow all the other technologies and be on top yes or no simple question this statement is a contradictory statement whether this is uh going to swallow all the other technologies and it's going to be future we don't know because we are still not understood about the technology what this python can do what we can achieve from this is it going to be better than the all the other technologies we'll try to understand but for now just getting into the subject it's just a name we will see how we got this name we'll see how we got this name but assuming that this technology is going to overtake all the other technologies that's not right currently because we still don't know right we still don't know what we can do we still don't know what other technologies can do we still don't know what other programming languages can do and how this becomes a solution how this is better we don't know so let's don't define that python is the best in terms of it can swallow all the other technologies we don't want to comment on this let's get into the subject now let's try to understand what this python can do for us getting into this the first thing which we will talk about is we'll try to understand what is python and i have told you in the beginning as well 
whenever you are learning any technology it's good to know about history no one is going to ask you in interviews no one is going to ask you when it was introduced who was a who was a person who introduced but just the respect that we need to give to a technology let's try to understand who introduced when it was introduced and then you go learning any technology it is always necessary to have your initial steps which is nothing but your installations and then finally as in then every programming language it's always necessary to start with our basics what is basics just like we want to speak english we'll start with abc similarly to learn any programming language we are going to learn basics i need to set up the context before i start the subject yeah. now in python what we are going to see is we are going to learn what is python then we will talk about the history then we will go with the installation and then we'll start with the basics now why basics of course i cannot go and directly teach all the libraries which is required right so basics is necessary so let's go with the fundamentals there is a good news and there is a bad news the good news is you are going to learn from scratch bad news is as and then you progress you will also see some complexity which we will be using for data engineering now uh, another context which i need to set it up is imagine if i am teaching you how to swim right if i am teaching how to swim i'm just giving you overall explanation okay it's very easy you just need to wear your swimsuit and you get into a swimming pool and uh, you have to keep on shaking your legs at the back and you have to pull your hands one side right one side left and you have to pull the water back and since you pull the water back the pressure goes back and you move forward because your body pressure is less than the water pressure this is how you can swim if i'm taking an online class for swimming do you think you can swim absolutely not you can never and are you going to take risk oh santosh has teached how to swim let's go and jump in the water let's go and jump in the ocean and then let's start swimming are you going to take this risk i am setting the context before the class python is like swimming python is like swimming the coach may be standing on land and you will be in water the coach can help you the coach can also be with you in the swimming pool he can help you to an extent as long as you jump into the water you can never ever learn swimming if you still stand on the land and you start giving the actions you stay you you give your uh, legs movement and you pull out you pull out your hands and legs if you do on the land it's not going to be useful if you want to learn swimming first you need to jump into the water that's the first step your coach may be with you or he may be outside water as well but what really matters is unless and until you make up your mind Trying to learn coding and jump into the water, no one can ever help you. Even if God comes and teaches us, also you can never learn coding. Even if God comes and teaches you the coding, you can still never learn unless and until you jump into the water and start swimming. This is the second context I am setting up, meaning that whatever I am teaching, it's one hundred percent necessary that you go and. practice you have to write every single letter of the code or else it's not going to be useful maybe later part of the course we will see how we can take help from google how we can take help from chat gpt or how we can take help from bard because we are not going to learn everything here so maybe any syntax we'll definitely look at it but initially it is recommended that it's like a swimming you have to jump into the water there is no other go if you are fear about water you can never ever learn swimming similarly if you are fear about coding you can never ever learn coding and other thing which i need to tell you is the first step you are going to take is going to be the toughest step once you cross that everything is going to be easy and what is the prerequisite to learn python what is the prerequisite you need to have to learn python the most important point to learn python is you have to know english if you know english you can learn python i'm not asking you to know that you have to be come from coding background i'm not asking that you need to be from a, a graduation i'm not asking that you need to have a very strong structured analysis or data structures all this nothing the only prerequisite to learn python is english if you're all can understand english you can all write your code simple let's get started let's try to understand what is this python now the first thing itself it says that python is a general purpose high level programming mm. what is this high level programming uh, somewhere i have heard this maybe in your graduation or maybe in your college you would have 
heard about something called low level language and high level language you would have heard about low level language and high level language now let's understand what is this low level language and high level language i have an example for you i have an example for you can anyone tell me just by seeing okay you're all new to programming i assume that you have zero knowledge on programming nothing you know but still i'm asking but still i'm asking by seeing this can you tell me what i'm trying to do though you don't have a knowledge i'm just still asking what i'm trying to do okay now tell me can you understand what is this do you know what is this eax this is no what is mov means this is called low level language even if you are from a non coding background if you just see what is happening if it is human understandable human friendly that language is called high level language and if it is a system friendly where system will understand better system will know what is this mov system will understand what is this eax and that is nothing but your low level language we have a two concept one is a high level language and one is a low level language high level language is something humans understand human friendly and low level language is something system understands better and system friendly is called low level language i am not saying high level language computers will not understand computers will, will still understand but what happens internally your high level language will be converted into a low level language and low level language will be able to understand by computer that is what happens in the back end that is what it happens at the back end at the back end every high level language will be converted into a low level language because computers are well known for low level language and the code will get executed but if you ask me see i can read both i can read both because i can also say it's nothing but uh, it's basically like they are doing a first number second number and they are adding I, i can say it but it's difficult your low level language is difficult for humans but your high level language is completely understandable it's because it's written in a normal english words maybe syntax or semicolon or whatever it is that and all is secondary but if i see it i should be able to understand what i'm doing and that's a high level programming and we all know that your python is a high level programming that's why i said to learn python to learn this coding the only one thing which you need to have is your english if you know english anyone can write code if you know english anyone can write code and that doesn't mean that i know english i'll stand on top of water and i'll start swimming no you have to be effective okay i'll tell you i keep saying this to all of the people but no one listens to me i'll give a try this time as well every day you keep doing one task you will become an expert every day all 365 days of the year you keep on doing one one task the same task again and again and again you will become an expert initially day one even in my case also even in my case also day one i used to be ready 10 minutes before the session make my arrangements make my seating have a glass of water be conscious about what i'm speaking all this i was doing day one of my training when 5 years back now let me tell you one thing even in the, in my sleep i can take a session even if i am sleeping even if my eyes are closed even if i am on bed i can still take a session why every day every day every day i am doing that now this is a only one formula and only one mantra you have if you want to learn coding every day from your 24 hours of your time you have to spend 20 minutes of your day on coding every day 20 minutes you have to spend end of the day end of this course not everyone will be off with the same same knowledge on python i can assure you this right away you will be trained with the same trainer you will all be part of ksr but by end of this course not everyone will stand at the same boat today we are all standing on the same boat after this course everyone will be dispersed you know why depends on your practice you practice 20 minutes in a day you will become an expert you practice 5 minutes a day you'll still be a beginner you practice nothing you just listen you'll still stand on the water and start swimming so every day 20 minutes of practice is what is expected from you apart from what data engineering data science data analytics everything you keep it aside every day 20 minutes you have to practice and that's the only way to master coding and the reason why people are not able to understand coding are not getting interest it's all all because of the 20 minutes if you are good with the 20 minutes the job is done right now since we discussed about the high level language we'll also see this father of python and i can't even spell it you read it by yourself and that's not at all required for us but as i've told you any technology it's good always to respect the person who has invented us so this is a person and 
we know that it was introduced in 1989 and the actual uh, python was introduced in 1990 i'm very close to this year so that's why this is something which is also motivating me to learn my age and this python age is almost the same almost the same so i would say that okay very good it's almost when i was born maybe the technology was also born right and that's why this technology makes me a bit more comfortable same age group it's fine if i ask you to go and talk to your grandparents you'll not spend too much time but if i ask you to spend your time with your cousin you'll spend hours together reason same age right so let's start learning this technology from the beginning and in meanwhile we will also try to know how we can master this and if you see this it was introduced in national research of institute in netherlands and uh, as rightly said by one person it's not coming from a snake name snake name it's not a snake name actually so python was actually a show name we have a very popular show uh, which is actually called uh, the monty python circus it's actually a uh, program so based on that program the name was kept of course it's it was a coincidence that it's a snake name don't try to relate snake with your snake with your technology okay it was a popular show's name they have kept it and who, who who expected that that program will also be like a snake name right so we didn't so it's coming from a show name and the last thing which we are saying is it's a called a dynamically typed program what is dynamically typed program in order to see this what is this dynamically typed program we'll see an example in the uh, next few slides where we'll try to understand how this is going to be helpful the first thing it is going to be very helpful is it's a high level programming language that humans can understand you bring anyone even is a 10 standard or 11 standard guy if he knows english he will understand what we have done here right you will know what we have what we have done here because this is human friendly human friendly because the name the way i have given it will definitely make understand so it's called high level language that's why i said don't bring into your mind that coding is only learned by people who are from coding background never never okay even after seeing chandrayaan 2 and chandrayaan 3 you should be knowing that not, nothing is impossible in this world right when we can step on moon stepping on python is a difficult what you need only practice only learning there is no other shortcuts now let's go into the how it is going to be useful for our data engineering first of all we are learning python not for any other purpose for our course only we are learning what is our course i think for the first 10 15 minutes you forgot why we have joined this course right we have joined this course to have our a smooth learning in data engineering we have joined this course to learn data engineering so for data engineering so far you are all restricted only to communicate with database but what if i want to communicate with n number of other tools there are so many tools that we are going to use in data engineering in order to communicate between different 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 tools there is a one language which can help us you can relate this language to an english where you can go and survive anywhere any part of the world and that's why this is a technology we are going to use and the reason why we are going to use python for data engineering is the first thing is larger community you just are stuck with some issue you go and ask a community you will get thousands of answers you're stuck with some real time use case you go and ask community you will get thousands of answers that's the first thing that we have in python which is actually called as large community so we have lot of materials we have lot of documentations it's not a new subject right it's almost 1990 means it's almost 30 years old so in this 30 years old so many things have changed so many things they have in place so many documentations you have so whenever you're stuck with anything you can go and ask that's a larger community see here for every question you will find an answers you will find an answers right any question you ask you will find an answer what is there in your college times uh, you have a textbook okay what they will do they will ask you to uh, read the subject and in the back of the textbook they will be giving some question paper questions and they'll ask you to answer this question yes or no this is what we have experienced in our college and schools or whatever it is right so what you need to do right from the beginning you have to read line by line line by line line by line line by line and the english context will be different and there will be questions on on top of the every lesson you need to find the answer and the way you need to find the answer you have to frame it properly now this is what we had in between suddenly we got something called guide do you remember what do you mean by guide we had a textbook we had a questions and in between we started getting something called guide what will a guide have no question answer everything is there 
question and answers, everything will be available. Yes or no? Every question and answer will be there. If I give you a guide, will you go and again read the textbook? No. You have all the questions. You have all the answers. Why are we going and again and learning line by line? And that's what is happening now. No one is interested to learn Python line by line, line by line, line by line. Not required. End of the day, we need to get the answer. And for that answer, we have a guide. Guide is a book which is very much similar to a textbook. But rather than having the stories and all, they will give the question, they'll give the answer. They'll give the question, they'll give the answer. They'll give the question, they'll give the answer. And that's what your community is going to do. For every problem, a solution is there. And you just need to read, read, write it. Simple. That's what we are going to do. This is about the large community. And the other easiest thing is why Python is most preferable is very, very easy syntax. Very easy syntax. Syntax comes in all of the programming language, but when you compare Python, it's very simple. We need to follow some basics. If you follow the basics, coding is very easy, especially when you're working with Python. I started my career learning C. Then I started learning C Sharp, C++. Then I went with Java. Then I went with .NET. Finally, now I have learned Python. But what happens? 2014, C, C, C++, C Sharp. 2015, Java, Python. From 2016, I'm using Python. Almost seven to eight years. The way it gives you the clear answers with a very simple syntax, anyone can master this language. Anyone can master this language. Fifth standard, sixth standard guys are now go going to coding exams or coding classes. Maybe you are also sending your kid. When they can learn, why we cannot learn? Yes or no? Fifth standard, sixth standard guys are now going, going for code, uh, coding coaching exams. I even I don't know. My cousin was saying, I'm going to send my uh, brother to coding. Are they going to teach me fifth standard? Yes, yes. Why not? Let them learn coding from now only. When they can learn, why you cannot learn? They don't even know how logic works. But you are far better than their mindset. Can't you learn? No one is asking you to remember the syntax. If you go and search in Google also, you will get it. What really matters to master Python is logic. If you know logic, it's very easy. Correct? Now, it's very easy to write because easy syntax. and Let's see a very simple example. I want to display a hello world program. Hello world program. Let's always compare Python with Java because Java is an evergreen. Python is also trying to be evergreen. Let's always compare evergreen with evergreen. I just want to write a simple code. Hey, welcome. Thanks for joining today. This is what I want to write. And in order to do this, in order to do this, I have to write Java code. I have to write a Java code. And the way I have to write a Java code class. Hello world. I don't even know what is this class bracket public public static void main. I don't know string. Don't know bracket. Don't know what is this ARGS. Don't know again. Why this bracket? I've already defined right. Why again bracket? Okay. I don't know what is this system or but one thing I understand. It's a print statement. I'm writing a welcome to Java again. One more line. This is for which close one. Oh, this close it seems then again. Uh, again, they are like having this for this. It is, I think, this one, and finally, they are having some class, main, method, and logic, whatever they have written one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight lines in minus. I'll make this brackets because I'll write it in one line only. So, minus two lines, six lines to print a one word welcome to Java. Six lines just to print one word. And in Python, it's even more difficult. You have to write one line. In Python, it's even more difficult. You have to write one line. It's difficult or not? Yes or no? The comparison Java with Python. So I'll tell you one thing. Listen carefully. Data engineering is a Mount Everest. Data engineering is a Mount Everest. In order to climb your Mount Everest, you have to make sure that the other things are easy, right? In, you have to make sure the other things are easy. For climbing a Mount Everest, something you have to go and carry there. And let's say you are going with an Indian flag and you are going to flag it there. For that, you have to carry it easily, right? You cannot take all your luggages to go there, correct? To do a simple task, why will I write five lines of code in Java? Already there is a mountain to climb for me. And for doing some task, why should I go and use Java? I will try to find the easiest way. I'll try to find a, an easiest way of communication. And that easiest of communication is using Python for your data engineering, right? And that's the one thing which I need to tell about easy syntax. Now let's talk about a 
dynamically type programming. This is what we were seeing in the introduction slide. Now, what is this dynamically type programming and what is this static type programming? Let's talk about Java. Let's talk about Java and let's talk about Python here. When I say statically typed programming, when I say statically typed programming, one thing you have to do 100%, we have to first define, I am going to store the word data in the variable A. It is 100% mandatory to tell what type of this A it is. Is it an integer? Is it a string? Is it a data data? Something I need to mention before storing that value. Before storing that value, you are accepting what data type it is. Imagine a stranger is coming to your house. First, you will see in the camera on the door, who is that? Only knowing who is that, you will enter them in the house, correct? Because you want to know who they are. Similarly here, if you want to assign any variable, I may be using n number of variables. In order to assign that, first I need to tell them what is that variable? Is it a string? Is it an integer? You need to tell them what it is. Only then the system will understand. Okay, I will get a string value. I will get an integer value. But Python known for dynamically type programming. You simply give whatever you want. You give then I will take and I will assign myself. You don't give me, you, you don't tell me it's a string. You don't tell me it's an integer. You don't tell me it's a decimal. You don't do anything. You simply give, I will take it. You whatever you give, I will take it. Such a nice friend for me. You give whatever I want, I will take. Correct? That's the beauty of Python, which is called dynamic type programming. The reason why it is called dynamic type programming is because it accepts every value. And uh, see, one more thing I wanted to tell. Some people may already be knowing all this, but there are a lot of people who are learning coding for the first time. So it's necessary for me to go from beginning like ABCD. The good thing about KSR is even if CEO joins any from any company, our way of teaching will be as low as from ground. This is a rules that we follow within KSR. So people who feel that this you already know, of course, in your app, you always have a fast forward. You can even forward it to 1x times or 1.75x times or even 2x times you can pass it and you can go forward. But the reason why I'm going is, that's what I said, the quality of KSR will always be from the ground level. We are known to provide you the fundamentals. We will make your fundamentals strong. So some people who already know it, this looks even basics for you. And some people who are listening for the first time, I think this will definitely benefit for you. And the first preference as per KSR is to make sure that everyone understands, right? This is something which I wanted to tell. Now moving on, what you can do with Python, what you can do with Java. So even today I'll tell you, Java is an evergreen. No one, even Python can never ever replace Java. Java is known for its own applications. You can build a web application. You can build your enterprise application. Enterprise application, you can build your ICAC bank website. You can build IRCTC website, right? You can go and build Swiggy app. You can go and do anything in Java. Mm -hmm. I almost worked one year in Java in my start of my career. Such a beautiful subject, but unfortunately it requires a lot of lines. For hello world only, I have to write five lines means for any logic, I have to write a bigger logic. That means 100 or 200 lines I need to write if it's a Java. But if you are from a coding background, you people will enjoy Java. But we are not from coding background. So that's why we hate Java. Now what you can do with Java is Java is always useful for your web application, enterprise application, testing application, Selenium, whatever you want, you can do. Just keep this as an example. ICIC net banking, IRCTC website, right? ICIC website, IRCTC website. This websites can be easily built in Java. Of course, it requires a lot of lines, but we can still do it. But unfortunately, if you want to use Java for data engineering, data science or data analysis, where we have to go with charts, pipelines, models, Java is a not the first choice. Java is not the first choice. Java is known for enterprise application. You can build IRCTC website. It's more complex than that. You can do it. If you want to build an ICIC website, you can do it. 
that is called enterprise application you can build but if you want to go even deeper where you have to concentrate on data engineering data science or data analytics i'm not saying it's impossible you can still do it but i've already told you learning data engineering it's all is all it all it's like almost a climbing a mount everest for that why are you making things complicated in year only you have to have a very good path if you're choosing an option like i'll learn java of course it's becomes a very difficult because there's a lot of logics you need to implement for hello world only five lines means for implementing a pipeline i have to write 5000 lines who will go and write that is why we have actually have an alternative which is called python so in python also you can build your web application you can build a desktop application you can do some scripting you can also test it and you can also write some data science now if you see the uh, comparison we have python to support more applications than java then can i go and say that python is better definitely no why python is good python is better python is best where in the applications where you want to build a data pipelines data science data engineering scripting web application but if someone is asking to build a irctc website hdfc net banking if we are going to ask to build in python i am sorry to say this your python will not be that effective you can do it you can do it but not that effective java is effective in building irctc website python is not good for building irctc website java is very bad in giving the data engineering pipelines python is very good in data engineering pipelines all in all what i want to convey from this slide is both technologies are always good in their own stream i'm not here to compare java is better or python is better right eagle is also called the king lion is also called the king blue whale is also called the king but are they king on the same platform no each one has their own kingdom each one has their own kingdom same way java is a king when comes to an enterprise application python is a king when comes for data related technologies again i'm saying i am not here to degrade one subject and have an influence to other subject no both as pros and cons just relate this eagle is also king lion is also king but do you think eagle and uh, lion will fight definitely not eagle will fight with all the other birds lion with fight with all the other animals simple they both are in different kingdoms that's what we are doing here both as different use case different way of working but what is needed for us is we are not here to build a enterprise application have you joined this course to build an irctc website definitely no we are here to build a data pipelines for that the one technology which i am going to choose will be undoubtedly python with python you can do wonders that's what i'm saying when you want to walk to mount everest you need to make sure the other things are simpler you should have a proper shoes you should have a proper weightless shoes you should have a proper uh, since you're going into the peak you should have a proper shelter everything you should have then only your road to success will be easier and for us for data pipelines the python is easier when we compare to other technologies okay now this is about java versus python now let's see why it is actually the better one when we compare to other languages for that you need to understand this slide which is very important uh we not we don't want to get deeper into what does java does what does c does and all just try to understand c there is a language called c in c what happens in c what happens imagine you have to write some logic imagine you have to write some logic imagine like you want to cook food so for cooking food what you need directly you cannot do the last step at the beginning correct the first step is you need to switch on the gas keep the whistle start adding all the ingredients then maybe you have to add a rice then you have to add a chili powder salt everything and finally you will cook it it's a process it's a process correct so you have to execute line by line it is a process this type is called functional your functional way of coding is first line has to be executed first then only you can go to the last step i cannot go and run my last step in the beginning that is not possible that is not possible your functional 
programming is a way of programming where it has to execute sequentially one after the other one after the other in terms of cooking you have a step by step process you have to follow that there is no other go first you will never put salt in the water correct you'll take a, a vessel you'll take a water first only you will not put salt salt is at the end you have a process to follow that's actually functional when it comes to java which is called oops oops is nothing but object oriented programming what is this object oriented programming uh, you write one com one complete function that function you can call it in the end or you can call it in the last who cares whenever you call it will work so in functional program uh, in oops concept what you're doing you're writing as an object you write it once use it as many times whenever whichever part of the script you want you rewrite it it will still work where we are focusing more on the objects what is objects let's say i want to uh, have some logic i'll define when variables i can use this variables any part of the time so it becomes object now java i was ta talking about it's like an object you write it once use it wherever you want whenever you want and no one cares now why python is getting famous is it actually uses some of the concepts from c some of the concept from c++ java that means it can do both it can do both uh, we have two maid who comes to my house of course if i keep on taking class who will work correct who will work so i have two maids who come to my house one maid comes in the morning and they'll start cooking and they'll prepare for the breakfast lunch and all they do this one maid comes who does the cleaning uh, they'll clean the house they'll do all the floor mopping everything they'll do one is very good in cleaning one is very good in cooking i was like thinking both will come at the same time sometimes it will be a clash one person will say i will keep, i'll be cooking in the kitchen you don't come and clean here fight will come right fight will come so what i thought why don't i hire a maid who knows both who knows both so it's a well planned they can only cook they can only clean don't you think i solved the problem very simple if i want to use a functional programming i have to go only with c if i want to go with oops i have to go and use only java what if i have a language where i can use both i can use the same made for both the works that's what your python is doing and not only that if you want to write some shell scripting it's basically something unix that also it's possible in python that also it's possible and there is a, a different uh, modeler if you go but go back to the olden days they would be writing some um, uh, low byte code right that also you can write which is called scripting also you can write model also we can do it. just focus only on this it is a combination of both functional programming as well as a object oriented programming when this can do everything when this can do everything then what is the problem in choosing this technology then what is the problem in choosing this technology and that's why we have python to be the first choice of programming language for any technology for i mean any implementation you see i am saying that even you can build a web application even you can build a mobile application even you can build your own app everything is possible but certain things are effective only with certain things python is well known for its data driven technologies work if you want to build a machine learning algorithm if you want to build a data pipeline if you want to do some analysis python is your first choice because with a limited code we have to achieve the maximum results that is possible only by python now this is about the python on this day i am saying you that python is better than all the other programming language not as a overall only for our use case only what we need only what we are going to achieve for that python is best never ever i have told you that python is better among all the technologies that i will never say you because each one has their own pros and cons java has its own pros and cons python has its own pros and cons we cannot replace each other see there is a apple okay there is a apple and you can replace this apple with a better apple correct you can uh, go with a branded apple or maybe it's a, from a cashmere apple whatever it is you can have a better apple but you have a apple you have a mango now you cannot replace mango with an apple you cannot replace apple with a mango no apple with apple is possible apple with mango is not possible because both as their own taste both as their own importance both as their own impact both is good for health in that case i cannot go and replace one other java cannot replace python python cannot replace java but what i need is 
I need Mango. So I'm going for Mango. As simple as that. I need Python. I'm going for Python. Okay. So this is what I wanted to make you understand. What is Python? What is the background history of Python? And why Python is most useful because it can work as a functional programming. It can work also as an object-oriented programming. So that's why Python is better for our use case. So we are choosing Python. I'm not comparing. I'm not debating. But we are going to use for data engineering and I keep saying this it's a uphill you need to climb that for that you have to make your path journey smooth in order to make that let's achieve it with a less number of code with the maximum results that's why we are choosing Python okay now uh, from the subject perspective we will stop here we will continue the installation we'll see how to install in the next class now to answer all of your few questions just Imagine that Python is an ocean. Python is an ocean. In Python, you can build a web application. You can build a mobile application. You can build any gaming application. Even if you want to build a Candy Crush or your PUBG, you can still build in your Python. You can use it for your data science. You can use it for your data analysis. You can use it for data engineering. Don't expect we will teach you how to build a PUBG application here. Don't expect we will be learning complete Python as a ocean here. If I want you to teach Python A to Z, I will take minimum three and a half years to teach you. Every single topic, if I want to teach you, I can teach it for three and a half years. But is it really required? If you are learning your mobile application, why will you become a data engineer? You will become a mobile developer. If I'm teaching you how to build a gaming application, what you will do here, you will be somewhere in the NVIDIA. You will be in that company who is building a mobile application or a gaming application. What is required here? How to use Python for your data engineering? And that's why this course will be stringed. This course will be scrutinized only to learn data engineering concepts. What and all we are going to cover, it's already mentioned in our course content. Those things only will be covered. Apart from that, if you want to become an expert in coding every day, 20, 20 minutes, you need to practice for data engineering. What is required? Whatever we are covering in the class. If you focus on that, it's more than enough. Remember, whenever you join a class, your focus is data engineering only. In order to reach the data engineering, we are choosing the paths. That path is what one will be SQL, one will be Python. And with respect to Python, we are not going to learn. It's like an ocean. Even if you ask me, you have been training people for almost five years and you have experienced 10 years. Can you go and build a mobile application or can you go me build an, a Candy Crush application in Python? My answer to a question is no, I will not do it. I don't even know to do it. Why I need? I know why it is used for that only I'm using this Python. Is it clear? We'll stop here. We'll continue tomorrow. Tomorrow, please join on time 8 o'clock. Thank you.